uh, here shopping. Uh, this is the second day of it so far, and I was too late to get to my phone. Um, so you can see that go. Uh, but we'll kind of go back over here. I'm just uh, cutting kind of slow. Uh, dude, this is a real rough patch, and this wheat's actually pretty good, but. Uh, there's lots of dead spots in here, and what happened is this guy uh, must have raised some corn. Or I, I mean, he raised corn for sure. We we cut this uh, this time last year, and then he must have like no-tilled uh, or must have planted corn right after we chopped this last year. And then he must have cut his corn and then either planted it early, early this spring or last fall. Uh, because this is, I mean, this is covered in corn stalks. But where he went in and planted, it just didn't come up real well in spots. It's doing good, but I wanted to uh, show this to uh, harass Ted because he's, he loves no-till and I, I, think it's it's funny just just because I like to harass Ted uh, honestly uh, this is probably what I would have done because you know they're double cropping and but you, you get spots like that and then right through here I don't know why why this happened um, you know their drill may not even have coulters on it and I I would think that it, it does, but, you know, then again, it may have not had coulters on it, and they were just using, uh, they were just putting a lot of pressure down, and, but, you, I mean, it kind of has some spots to it, but, <coughs> this is no-tilled wheat into corn, corn stalks, so, that kind of gives you an idea, I guess, what happens when you do that, um, if you're not, you know, getting enough, if you're not cutting through the stalks, but, um, I'm gonna answer a question, I'm kinda trying not to do too many farming videos, but that's kinda where I'm stuck right now. Uh, Chris Bird asked if I do a, a video on my pins, <clears throat> and a couple other guys, and I'm gonna do those, uh, maybe this weekend, or, sometime but I can't do it while I'm stuck here in the swather because I get here before uh, before daylight and I leave at like 730 in the afternoon so there's only like 30 minutes of daylight left by the time I get home and I, I want to do it during the daylight so as soon as I get a day where I'm not doing this I'll make a video on the pins and how we built them and why we built them that way. Uh, but to answer a question that is always getting asked <clears throat> is uh, why why do I cut for this silage cutter? And wouldn't it <coughs> wouldn't it just be easier for the the silage cutter to use a uh, a direct cut head you know well here's here are the reasons why I cut in front of a silage cutter with a merger um, number one is with a direct cut head you're only gonna get as about as wide as I'm cutting now uh, I think 15 16 foot is this and I don't even think some of them are that big uh, so you have a really big silage cutter used for cutting corn uh, you just you're not even coming close to tapping the machine's potential in horsepower whoops I, I pushed my wrong button oh, I gotta turn this around. so that's one reason the second reason is this pain in the ass going again the second reason the reason is because 
uh, fuel efficiency. So when I say you're not tapping into the machine's full potential of power, is it, it takes uh, X amount of, yeah, I'm, a, I'm gonna pivot track with one of my back tires, so I'm gonna pause this and I'll get you on the next one. All right, well, I, I lied. It's, I just wanted to get this view. And that's... See, I'm always on this side of the truck. That's the problem. Okay, picking it back up. I... The pivot track wasn't bad, but I had my back tire sitting in it, and so since it's on auto steer, it really does not like that because it's jerking the machine around. But uh, yeah, I'm laying some hay down. I can actually film this now that I have auto steer. But we'll go back to the reason as to why they hire me to cut it. Okay, so we've established a direct cut head is just, it's not big enough and they use, they're gonna use too much fuel. I say, okay, the chopper uses 300 plus gallons of diesel a day, minimum. That's what it uses a day to chop. So, I have cut their fuel bill in half on the chopper and that so what when you really need to think about it it was like that chopper it's a big machine it's designed for cutting corn I, it just uses a lot of fuel this wheat there's not much here so it never loads the machine to its true potential but it has it burns x amount of diesel no matter what you do so what happens is that machine comes around and then it's doing one pass instead of two. So it's using half the fuel already for the same amount of diesel. It's easier on the trucks for turning because on these pivots, it's a nightmare for turning close to the pivots. It's a lot, it has actually made it a lot faster for them too because of the turnaround. So they can turn around a lot quicker and it just, it actually makes the whole day go faster. Now the other other thing is that's just the that's just the chopper that we're saving fuel on. That's not the eight semis that we have sitting here for one chopper. You know, they have to go half as far to get a load as they were before. So that's half as much fuel in the trucks. And if you direct cut, you can run into the chance of it being too wet. But where I'm cutting ahead of them, it can actually dry just a little bit. So here's you a uh, here's you a shot, and so that works out really good for them that way, is they can uh, they can get it in there and get it at the right moisture that they need. You know they're not running 75 percent; they're running 68 percent because they're just a little bit behind me. Uh, and people have asked me that like, why don't you why don't you use a, a tractor and three mowers well there are a few companies here that use the big m we're not gonna buy a big m or we're not gonna buy a tractor with three mowers for a couple very simple reasons number one we don't do enough hay to justify it or wheelage number two I buy a, a, a triple mower machine, well, it's only 30 feet wide and I'm cutting 32 feet. So, I'm still putting, you know, I'm still putting the exact same amount of hay in that windrow when, when I merge it as one of those triple mowers. Exact same amount. Now, you, you can say, well, why don't you just get a, and someone has said, why don't you get a, a tractor and a merger? Well, that's a, that's a very uh, good idea because those people do it. And what they're doing is they're merging two of the triple mowers together. So you're getting, you're getting 
like four of my swaths. So two of my big wind rows together. Let me pause you. All right. Well, here's the thing about that. Is a triple mower is gonna cost you 200, 250,000, you know, for the tractor and the mower and everything. Or a big M is gonna cost you 400,000 or 350,000. It's gonna cost me twice what this machine cost. Well, if you buy a triple mower, or a, say a, a big M, you still gotta run that tractor and that merger. A two year old merger here cost $100,000 used, and that's used. But you gotta have a tractor to pull that merger. That's another $150,000. So you're gonna spend a quarter of a million dollars just, just to, to merge a little bit more hay you know, maybe one more or two more rows than this. I don't think that's enough to justify on fuel savings. If you are doing a lot of wheatage, you know, way more than we'll ever consider doing, then yeah, that, that's, a, that's, that's the way to go. But you still have to have the swather to cut it down. You just can't get away from that. You still have to have that machine. So, for uh, operation our size, which is not a very big operation, we do pretty good. It's just, why, why even, you're not gonna be able to pay for it at all. So, what you do is you buy a swather like I've got, which I have to use to cut hay for custom hay work anyway, and you just put a merger under it. And a merger is like 17,000 brand new. So, I'm gonna put a $17,000 merger under my machine and not spend a quarter of a million dollars to the, do pretty much the exact same I'm doing right now. Like, that's just, <coughs> you know, saves me a quarter of a million dollars plus another operator. Like, uh, just another person has to drive the tractor and it's just, you know, two more pieces of equipment to break down. So, I hope I answered your question as to why they hire me to merge the crop, or to cut the crop, instead of just using a direct header. Because moisture is a big deal. We have to have it at the right percentage. Fuel is a big deal. And it costs way too much to buy a triple mower or a tractor and a merger because we bought a triple mower. It just, the cost isn't there. So this works for us. Their main deal is corn silage and we just do wheelage when we when they have it and it works for me, it works for them and it gives me a way to pay for my swather because I probably wouldn't be able to pay for this swather and everything else if I didn't have this job. So I'm glad that they hired me to do this. And they're happy that they hire me to do this because I, I think I pretty much what they pay me just saves them on a lot of fuel expense that they were gonna spend anyway. So, you know, it saves them wear and tear and time, which that's always makes people happy. But, uh, gonna have to get some more cattle videos up uh, just because I told some people I would and really after wheatage I've got to do my hay and branding and then we're gonna build pins and build a barn and then it'll be on into the summer from there so stay tuned